Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We're reading in the book of Joshua. Last time we read about the conquest of Ai. And here in chapter 9, that was in chapter 8. Here in chapter 9, we're going to read a bit about the Gibeonites and a little bit of trickery. So we're reading in Joshua chapter 9. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. Now, when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowland at the western edge of the hills of Judea and all along the coast of the great Mediterranean Sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, no, I didn't say that one right, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of this army and its victories over Jericho and Ai, They gathered together with one purpose to fight with Joshua and with Israel. Israel. But when the people of Gibeon, the Hivites, heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they too acted craftily and cunningly and set out and took along provisions, but took worn out sacks on their donkeys and wineskins, leather bottles, that were worn out and split open and patched together, and worn out and patched sandals on their feet, and worn out clothes, and all their supply of food was dry and had turned to crumbs. So, notice what these people are doing. They're trying to make it look like they come from a long distance. Now, notice when they say the Gib, the, they say Gibeon, the, the people of Gibeon, the Gibeonites, they call them the Hivites. Now, if you notice back up in verse 1, it does say the Hivites, and it says makes it sound like they were going to join with these other people to fight. But then here in verse 3, the Hivites, the Gibeon, um, the Hivites, it sounds like they have kind of, well, we kind of thought thought about that a little more, and we don't think we can win, so we're going to try something else, right? We're going to try another tactic. And that's what they're going to do here, okay? So uh, let's continue in our text. They went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a far country, so now make a covenant treaty with us. But the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you are living within our land. How can we make a covenant treaty with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Then Joshua said to them, Who are you and where do you come from? They said to him, Your servants have come from a country that is very far away because of the fame of the Lord your God. For we have heard the news about him and all the remarkable things that he did in Egypt and everything that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Heshbon and to Og the king of Bashan who lived in Ashtaroth. So our elders and all the residents of our country said to us, Take provisions for the journey and go to meet the sons of Israel and say to them, We are your servants. Now make a covenant treaty with us. This bread of ours was hot, fresh, when we took it along as our provision from our houses on the day we left to come to you. Now look, it is dry and has turned to crumbs. These wineskins which we filled were new, and look, they are split. Our clothes and our sandals are worn out because of the very long journey that we had to make. So the men of Israel took some of their own provisions and offered them in friendship, and foolishly did not ask for the counsel of the Lord. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant treaty with them to let them live, and the leaders of the congregation of Israel swore an oath to them. So notice here, when you read in other texts, it doesn't always fill you in quite as much. The Amplified Bible does try to give you the the idea of what's going wrong here. So the thing is, these men have come and basically tried to trick Israel, Joshua, and the leaders, and they have succeeded in tricking those men. And you'll notice here in verse um, 14 that they foolishly did not ask the counsel of the Lord. And this 
was their downfall in this instance. They should not have made this treaty or this covenant without checking with the Lord first. And that's a big part of the idea here. So let's read on with chapter uh, with verse 16. It happened that three days after they had made a covenant treaty with them, the Israelites heard that they were actually their neighbors and that they were living among them. Then the sons of Israel set out and came to their cities on the third day. Now the cities of the Hivites were Gibeon, thus they were called Gibeonites, and Sephira and Beeroth and kiriath Jerim. I'm not the best with those names, but that's I think that's okay. But the sons of Israel did not strike them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, to spare them. And all the congregation murmured, expressing great dissatisfaction against the leaders. But all the leaders said to the whole congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, so now we cannot touch them. This is what we will do to them. We will let them live so that the wrath of God does not come upon us for violating the oath which we have sworn to them. The leader said to them, Let them live as our slaves. So they became the cutters and gatherers of firewood and water carriers for the entire congregation, just as the leaders had said of them. Now I want you to realize, I think probably instead of slaves, because you'll notice, They became the cutters and gatherers of wood and water carriers. They were definitely servants. Were they truly enslaved in in the way, especially in the way our mind thinks of slaves? I don't think they were truly enslaved in that way. In the old world, long time ago, everybody didn't instantly say slave and think of what we think of here in the U.S. We think everybody, when we say slave, we think of everybody being bull whipped, you know, out in a field, right? That's what we think of someone that's in rags, that's terribly mistreated all the time. Now, a lot of times I realize that there are abuses and that is the type of slavery that you can get. But in the old world, there were people who were called slaves who would we would we would consider them more to be servants or maybe not hirelings, but they would be like indentured servants. They would be like living and being taken care of by their owner, and they would serve their owner. So that so they would be working basically for uh, room and board and that type of thing and food, um, that type of thing. And they were supposed to take good care of those servants. So I think there's variations in these words that, you know, when we look at it today, we look at it from our mindset and from what we know of and think of. But in their day, this, I think this word probably would have been better to have been said servants rather than absolute slaves. Slaves just brings that word to mind. Um, but then again, there is some validity to that. I mean, it's not like they really had a choice at this point. It's like, well, we're going to let you live, but you're going to have to serve us. So that is true. That is the way that is. Let's continue on. Joshua called the Hivite men and said, Why did you deceive us, saying we live very far away from you, when in fact you live among us? Now, therefore, you are cursed, and you shall always be slaves, both cutters and gatherers of firewood and water carriers for the house of my God. They replied to Joshua and said, Because your servants were told in no uncertain terms that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the land's inhabitants before you, we feared greatly for our lives because of you. And so we did this deceptive thing. Now look, we are in your hands. Do to us as it seems good and right in your sight. So that is what he did to them. He rescued them from the hands of the Israelites, and they did not kill them. Now on that day, Joshua made them cutters and gatherers of firewood and water carriers for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to this day in the place which he would choose. 
So he definitely made servants of them. And it doesn't sound like the kind of thing that we would call slavery today. I will say that. But it, he did make them servants nonetheless. They were going to stay in the land, but they were going to be servants of the Israelites. However, I just want to remind you that God warned the Israelites that if you allow these people to stay and you live with them, they will be a bad influence on you and you will go to worship their idols and other gods. And if you've read your Bible beyond this point, you know that that's what they do. God is always right. And that's what they end up doing. They end up being polluted, corrupted, and deceived into worshiping idols. We're going to see some of that in the future as we read through, Lord willing, as we read through Joshua and the next books in the Bible, we will see that and just see how correct God was in what he told them would happen if they didn't do what he actually said they should do, which in this case, we see they let themselves be deceived. They should have checked with the Lord, right? Okay. So thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.